Welcome to The Few, brought to you by Zappo Bank. In this series, we explore the extraordinary journeys of a select inspirational few whose quiet revolutions have sparked change across the globe. Their stories are those of vision, tireless dedication, and unwavering belief. Stories that echo our own. What we see in them, we see in ourselves. What they believe, we believe. And that when human ingenuity and determination come together, anything is possible. In this episode, I am joined by Fatuani Mukeli, who is a creative genius with a multidisciplinary approach to storytelling. Art is beyond just creating it. The business of art is as important as the art itself. Being talented is not enough. I had to learn I was adaptable. Everyone's going through challenges, right? The difference is how you show up. I'm scared, but when I show up, you think this guy's got it together. Wealth has nothing to do with money. To me, wealth is waking up and doing what I love and not having to stress. Fatuani Innocent Mukeli. Yes. That's how I pronounce it. Correct. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, interesting to me. I uh, read some articles around your relationship with your name. Yes. And we spoke briefly about it as well. What was interesting is how when you were in Venda and you were a young boy, they called you Fatuani when yes. you were there. Yes. And then you moved and you went into a multiracial school and you called yourself Innocent. Yes. I want you to take me back to who those two boys were. I can't imagine that that was the same person because you do briefly speak about how you called yourself Innocent because you primarily didn't want to get bullied. Yes. So... Take me back to who Fatuani in Venda was and who Innocent was when you came into the multiracial school. Okay, cool. So just to clarify, um, it was Soweto Shawela, but then yeah, we used to go to Venda and back and all of that. So Fatuani, the first Fatuani was young before I I had to change to Innocent, was extremely confident. Uh, I thought I was extremely intelligent and... You know, a little bit uh, arrogant because I was smarter than other kids with my twin brother. And then when we turned nine, we went to like a multiracial school in Eldorado, Eldorado Park, which is Soweto. Then the confidence went out the window because yeah. now uh, I had to change my name to uh, Innocent, which is in my ID. And also to avoid being bullied because Patuani is a very tough name to to uh, pronounce for everyone except to vendor people. And I then became extremely shy. But luckily, I had had my twin brother with me all the time. So we were those kids who spoke softly to each other and no one can hear us. And then um, I'd never want to speak in front of the class or read in front of of the class. But uh, in, in, in short, I was... Fatuani, the young Fatuani was confident and then the young innocent was not confident at all. At this age, Fatuani, why do you draw? You know, it, it, it's, it's, it, I was drawing because people found it uh, fascinating and, and everyone, when they see what I was drawing, they go, wow, you're so good. It made me feel really good because it, it, there were kids who read so well and were getting A pluses. My, my way to get or praises or something was to like draw something amazing and then people go, wow, you got, you, you're really talented. Yeah. You know, and it just made me feel good, you know, and um, it's, 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 yeah, I'll say that again. It, it, it was my way and still my way of belonging in this world, you know, and this is how I fit in, in this very complicated world, how I can express myself well, because I'm not a writer or a girl can read 10 books in one go, whatever. I, I can just, I can, draw and paint 10 artworks in one night. That's my superpower, you know, and that's where I I, I don't do it for people anymore. Or I went past the stage where I want to see people go, wow, this is amazing, which, yes, I love that. But I, I there's nothing that drives me more happy or crazy when I see my artwork and I'm like, yes, did I make that? This is dope, you know, like, oh, my brother and I go, man, I check what I did. And I look at what he did. I'm like, wow, you're really good at these oils. I must try them. You know, that's my way of uh, belonging in this world. And I, I've never been happier to be able to live off something I love with all my heart. You know, and I can do this. 
I will do it until I die because it's so much fun. There's something you said in one of the interviews, and I think it was around 2020 when you found your way back to art. Yes. And um, you said uh, art healed you. Yes. And uh, you used the hashtag art therapy. Yes. And you also expressed that you found your way back to art because you were in a bit of a dark space. Yes. Can you chat to us a little about what was happening at the time? Yeah. So uh, I'm an entrepreneur and I was running my business. It was tough because of COVID. We had closed and I had picked up a, a, a bad lifestyle of just like partying a little bit too much. Mm. Um and lockdown happened, so we're not going anywhere. I'm sitting at home and I, I start going, having like um, introspection, you know. I love co- talking to myself and going, where are we, you know, and just go, what are we doing? Where are we? What's happening, you know? Because I had all this downtime. I, I just went, why are you not happy, you know? And um, I realized that, I had almost everything most kids wish could have. The cool sneakers, a cool apartment, a nice car, all that stuff. But I wasn't happy. And I realized that I had drifted so much away from myself. I wasn't doing the things that feed me. You know, I was waking up and coasting. I was just like a zombie. And it happens to a lot of people when you're not present and when you're not awake you wake up and you just go to work and you're chasing that paycheck, which is, I mean, life is there, but I, I wasn't connected to myself anymore. And then I then went, what do I enjoy? I, I enjoy backflips for weird enough gymnastics. I like gymnastics. I'm fascinated by parkour and calisthenics. I went, okay, cool. I'm going to start training again. I need to be strong to be able to do like a backflip and all those things I used to do when I was a kid. And then I need to start drawing and and painting again because that makes me happy. At the time, I never thought I'd be able to. It would. Uh, uh, it would. Is it blow up? It, it would just pick up like mm. that. I never thought I'd be an artist. I'd take art art as a career. The the businesses I have or the business I have was based on creativity, but it's not really art to be honest. Uh, agency stuff is is creative, but it's not the type of art I belong in. Because, yeah, personally, I think everything is art, but the type of art I belong in was, is not advertising stuff. It's not commercials and stuff, you know? Then I started drawing for myself, and I'm an I'm a oversharer on Instagram or social media. I then started sharing my process of, like, getting back to my art. And immediately the first artwork I did on, like, an A2 paper a lady said, hey, I really like that. How much? And uh, I won't lie. I thumb sucked it. And number was like, uh, whatever. She said, cool. Uh, I'm in Germany. Do you, how are you going to send it? Uh, how do you want to get the payment? I said, oh, I've got PayPal. She sent through the payment. And I had to figure out shipping it to her. The next day, same thing happened. Next day, same thing happened. I was like, wow, okay, this is great. I just made money. And when no one's, no one's making money, it's ridiculous. And I made money off something I really enjoy, you know? After two weeks, I, like I'm obsessive. I love, and it like I was just drawing and painting and people were buying. After like two weeks, no one bought, no one bought, no one bought. And then I started feeling down. And I then rechecked myself again. Why do you feel this way? And it was because now the association with art was based with money, based on money. Yeah. And I had to readjust that again and go, I need to create for me. Yeah. Not for sales. And yes, the sales is important. Business, the business of art is important, but the creation of it should never come from a place of, oh, I need to make the stacks. Because now if I'm painting and they're not selling, I'm going to crash. You know, and now I just paint as much as I want, like a lot for me. And it's therapeutic because it connects me back to Batuani, little Batuani. And that's where my goal is, gold is. That's where the healing is for me because all the void and the, 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 uh, the partying, the just not be centered went away because now I'm in check. I'm connected to my inner child. 
you know, Fatwani, the old Fatwani and the young Fatwani are connected. And my ideas come from that, my life experience, what I enjoyed as a child. And I find that that's where the secret of life is. What you really, really love as a child is exactly what will save you when you're older, you know. And this is where I am. And that's why I say I'm living my dream because I wouldn't have imagined as a kid drawing and showing my mom my drawings and my dad my drawings later in life I would be living off this thing that was just a purely fun exercise for me and now I go in my studio to have that much fun and I and a, a good living off it it's it's unbelievable it's you know gold. it's gold I can't believe it because I go damn sometimes I do have an imposter syndrome and I say what if then it all stops. Yeah. Then I go, what if it just continues what and it becomes better? What if it just better? keeps going? You what know? if it just keeps going? Yeah. I, I think that's, that's, there's something about your level of self-awareness that I think is a big part of the magic of being Fatuani. I see it a lot with uh, people who have been able to harness success, that ability to step back and ask yourself questions that bring accountability back to self. Yes. How have you harnessed that? Because I think, you know, sometimes people watch successful people and they think it can never be me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's their truth. Yeah. They don't see any other way of being except who they are and where they are right now. Yeah. What practices, if it's a practice, have helped you harness the level of self-awareness that allows you to always step back? Because... You're not a, a person who's linear. It, it it feels like sometimes you go off the tangent, yes. but there is a way that you you find your way back to Fatuani. Where what how how does that happen? It's it's the biggest blessing is to have a twin brother, cause it's like a mirror. You know, uh, I'm the super excited guy, and my my twin brother is chilled. You know, justice is chilled. So, I he keeps me in check. You know, he doesn't necessarily go, hey, dude, you're losing your step there. I always, in a monthly, uh, monthly, I always like go back and say, where is justice? How is he moving? What is he doing? You know, also, what, is, what would my mom say of this way of living or my behavior? What, 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 what would my mom think if she sees me acting and living would this way? Would she be way? proud? You know, will she be proud of it? And then I go, oh no. So come back to, to lane, you know, to the line. Because... I also have a, a, a life principle. I need to always be my mother's child. Mm. And being my mother's child is the guy that I am when she's in front of me, you know, and I need to be that throughout my whole uh, existence. How I present myself to you, how I live or wake up, will my mom be proud of this, you know? And that is my center. Uh, what my brother... Would my twin brother like this persona that I have? I don't think he would. So why? You know, that's, that's the thing that always brings me, brings me back. Because, you know, we get lost sometimes. You get too excited. Oh, I've got this cool car. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got this. And you forget that it, with all those things, you're still the same Fatwani who had nothing, you know, because it's material stuff anyway. I love all these beautiful shirts, kicks or sneakers, but they can't be my, the, the definition of me. They're not your true north. Yes. The, the, the me is here, my, my heart and soul. And that's how I navigate life. I'm interested to, to know about the, the cons yes. particularly of uh, the codependency that you and your brother have with each other. Yes. And I'll tell you why I, I, I want us to speak about this because you, you, you're not, you, you don't only have a personal relationship, you also have a business relationship. Yes. And um, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs often feel that it would be easier to have a business partner that gets me, um, who I can bounce ideas off with. And then it becomes a struggle, of course, to find that person, you know, who you can build businesses with. But then there's the other side of it where you do have this person and you have an extremely codependent relationship yes. with them. How do you navigate the challenges that that codependency presents, particularly 
when you have to navigate the business relationship? So this this thing is like a marriage, number one. Our co- codependency, we, we practically married, to be honest. And uh, we've learned that we need to communicate clearly. There's no assumptions because assumptions create problems. Um, for instance, uh, we were shooting a thing in Limpopo for an amazing brand, both me and him. And he's a super passionate photographer guy. I'm a talented photographer talented photographer as well, but I'm not super passionate with it. And I knew that we're getting into this thing together and all of that. And I know he's going to go in and he's he's just going to try and take take control of everything. And I said, okay, cool. Let's plan how we're going to shoot there. What's going to happen? And he says, ah, these are the ideas and all of that. Because I know he's super passionate. I said, cool. You'll be first photographer. I'll be second photographer. You lead. And then I'll just follow from you. And there's other things like I'm super passionate with painting. And if we're doing uh, like a collab or something, he'll go, because you are passionate, you lead. Mm. Lead this part because I know that this is where you, 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 you're, you, strong. You're, you're strong. And it's just those kind of communications, being clear on how to approach what's expected, what's expected of each party's. Because uh, if we sit and assume, we're going to have fights. And we do have fights, you know, and disagreements rather. And we've learned to approach them better mm. through therapy. I'm <laughs> glad you brought up the, I, the, the, the conversation around passion, right? Because a lot of times people, I guess, define both of you as multidisciplinary individuals. Yes. And I was intrigued about how you define success as a multidisciplined person. Because a lot of people in their pursuit of purpose immediately assume that they should find the one thing Mm. that they are completely obsessed with and define their purpose around that. What has that journey looked like for you who has uh, touched DJing, Mm. touched photography, um, you know, you are passionate about gymnastics and then now you find yourself in art? When you were navigating that journey, did you ever feel like I have not found the thing yet? And I'm not yet in my purpose. Do you now feel in art that you are more in your purpose? Yes. So firstly, yes, I I feel that I, I'm in my purpose. And how I navigated to get there uh, was uh, through a mentor who I love with all my heart. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. We're business partners and he's also father of my godson. So when we met him, he saw that we very multi-talented and we are scatterbrains because we're touching everything. He said, okay, cool. I need you guys to focus in one thing and then slowly introduce everything. Uh, so the, how that worked, we started with advertising, which I think is is very important for a lot of people who want to get to be good at anything. Find a source of income, right? Uh, It doesn't have to be what you want it to be as a job, but get a job that will pay you so that you can afford to, afford your life and not bother your parents. And then, and also afford to start uh, investing into your passion. And investing into your passion is not just money. It's being able to pour petrol and drive to a place where you need to DJ or where you need to draw things or customize sneakers, uh, affording to buy fabrics to make uh, pants, get a job. It doesn't have to be the job you want yourself in. That's how our, 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 our mentor got us into advertising, which at first it was the dream because it's a career job. I'm not an educated person. I didn't go to Vega or Triple or Red and Yellow. This was dream number one. I'm like, whoa, this is an agency. They have everything I can imagine. There's internet. They're giving me a laptop. There's papers. There's sketch pads. There's pencils. You can use as much as you want, as long as everything you are doing feeds into your creativity. Uh, That then uh, introduced us into photography, which we never thought we would would be into photography. Uh, Photography was fun. We then uh, started I See a Different You that opened a lot of doors uh, for us um, 
it opened traveling, it opened the art world, all that stuff. And then through the nine to five in advertising, we started investing into the photography passion, buying the cameras, pouring gas to drive to Limpopo and shoot uh, whatever photos there, uh, flying to Kenya. Everyone thought we were being sponsored. We were investing as our own, you know, spending our own money to go there and do these things and post and it creates a blog or our brand bigger because they're going, wow, I see a different you Nigeria, I see a different you Kenya, all that stuff. And then slowly, your passion will buy you out, out of your nine to five. I love that. Doesn't happen overnight. It takes 10 years, some two years, some a year, but for us, it was 10 years. It bought us out of the nine to five. Then we had our own small agency. We are shooting our own things. We're managing our own things. And then... Through that, I then started investing into art, you know, and then the art brought me out of the, I see a different you stuff, or the, 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 the business of having employees and all. Then I went, ah, oh, gents, okay, now you can see I'm in like my lane. This is what I've always wanted to do. Can I focus here? You can run this guy. My business partners can run this. I just want to be in my studio and I want to just do this thing. I won't take a salary there. I won't take anything. I just want to give this my all. And that's how you navigate, you know. And this is a 18-year journey. You know, it's not overnight. And uh, it's still going. I'm not there. I'm getting there. Oh, there's never a there. I think it's just the journey is the... The process is the, the, is process, the journey. Yeah, the process is the journey. Yeah. It's fun, you know. And there's the dream, the goalpost shift. You get the house that you love and then you get a house like this. And mm. they, But the point is to enjoy and be present in the moment. And all the other stuff is material. It's good. It makes us happy. But the, the dream for me is to wake up and paint. And yeah. it's un, unbelievable. What makes you comfortable with change? I think the world is constantly evolving. And as people, we need to evolve with the world and rather allow to be adaptable and evolve because personally, I can't, I'll never, I don't know what the future holds. You know, as a painter, an artist right now, tomorrow I might wake up and I'm a soccer player. Or <laughs> not that though, but Maybe I Maybe a gymnast. Yeah, a gymnast. Or <clears throat> let's see where my career can lead me. Maybe I'll be doing sculpture. Right now, I'm doing a lot of portraiture, crosshatch. But I, I, art has allowed me or taught me to be adaptable, allow change. You know, um, if you had met me five years ago, I was full on an entrepreneur. I'm running a studio. You know, I've got employees that are reporting to me. I'm selling ideas to clients. And now I'm, I'm a I'm a painter, you know, and I, I have a restaurant. I do have stuff and, and, and all, but my life is completely different from what it was just five years ago. So it's being adaptable, uh, being willing to evolve with the universe, the, your personal universe, you know, and um, allow change. But tell me what that looks like in real time, right? Yeah. You are obsessive by nature and suddenly you're faced with, a new trajectory, yes. right? Are there tears? Are we crying? Are we calling mom? Are we calling justice? Are we calling all the mentors? Because here's the thing. Sometimes, you know, you listen to people speak and, and they speak so confidently about words that sometimes are not tangible, like be adaptable, right? I'm just like, I need to pay my bills. I have kids. I have this job that pays me. Really love to do the other thing, but have no idea how I transition. Are there tears? How are we doing it in real time? With and a what lot are we of considering? Fear. Yeah, with a lot of fear. And um, firstly, I'll go, everyone's going through challenges, right? Uh, the difference is how you show up. I'm scared. You know, when I was transitioning, I was scared. But when I show up, you think this guy's got, got it together. Yeah. And this is, for example, I'm leaving my business that I have a set salary that covers my bond, my car payments, my lifestyle to going into painting full-time where I don't have a set guarantee paycheck. I'm not sure if there's someone's going to buy an artwork today or tomorrow, or it will. I'll sell any artwork this month or in the next three months. 
it's 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 getting in with so much fear but at the same time taking that fear energy and converting it into a positive i was scared transitioning but my fear i took it out the studio the more i create the more like the luck i make the more work i'm creating and sharing someone sees it and buys it someone from nowhere people who are buying my work are not people i know how are they seeing it through social media through my link tree catalog some through word of mouth you know creating it on opportunity for yourself is through sharing your work i'm not precious about it i'm i don't go oh this is the only one i'll keep to myself i don't want people to see it because i'm making a living off it right and it's also learning the industry you're getting into i i understood advertising very well and production space the media space i understood it well i didn't understand art i understood stood how to create it but art is beyond just creating it the business of art is as important as the art itself i needed to learn that i was bothering a lot of artists can i come visit you can i see this asking them questions how how do you price what do i need they go you need a catalog you need to write what size it is what material you used is it on canvas is it on paper what paper is it archivable what are you framing it on understand the language understand the people the industry network within that space that's what i was doing and that way i create more luck mm. to sell so it's also not being comfortable it's scary as as i'm still scared you know and i take that fear i convert it into a positive how do, how does that look like i go to my studio i'm painting i'm i'm writing proposals being an artist doesn't mean you just paint and that's it i go online there's art opportunity there's art rabbit there's art stuff there's like uh there's another south african one i forgot the name but they have a lot of art opportunities every day i'm learning how to do murals i'm learning how to scale up my work you know uh, i'm learning how to use uh ink markers and make sure that it's um preserved that it lasts forever because maybe the sun hits it and it changes color how do you learn those things you need to and in learning it's because you want to be better you constantly learning i'm constantly learning youtube is the best teacher because unfortunately i never went to uh, art school and the only way to learn for me is research asking people a thousand questions some answer some don't and no one no one is entitled to my time or to give me i'm not entitled to anyone's time you know i just have to create this opportunity myself mm. there seems to be a theme about a lot of your shifts or the jumps where you kind of have to push through yeah and uh, you always have an opposing energy you know a, a challenge that you face that you you're kind of just like I'm going to overcome this. Yes. And it's it it's not happening only now in 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 art. It's happened in the past as yes. well when you found yourself in 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 some trouble in advertising. Yes. yes. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about how in that moment when you felt like I've made it. I'm I have a job. I'm here. I'm doing this thing. I don't know how, but I'm here and I'm doing this thing when 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 that challenge Conf- you were confronted with that challenge what was happening in your mind and i mean there is a naivety in being young of course yes. i remember those feelings of i'm g- i'm going to figure this thing yes. out outside of that naivety what was it that anchored your confidence around navigating that challenge so when i got into advertising i never went to the advertising school so i was scared number one, i don't know the rules of advertising I just know that I have talent and it's just raw talent. I can draw. I'm a visual guy. And knowing that I'm a visual guy, I fall under I can be a graphic designer or an art director within the advertising space. And I gravitated to art direction because the title sounds nice. <laughs> art director, you know. Uh and um firstly, I knew that I don't know what art direction is. So I I went in the to all art directors how do you do this because they give you a brief please do a print ad for coca-cola for vodacom i don't know how these things work what fonts do they use i didn't know canning letting uh i didn't know 
uh, how to center my my stuff, deep edging, all that stuff. I just had a good visual IQ of putting things together, but I didn't know there's a CI guide. You put things this way. Coke only uses red. You don't change the logo to blue. You, you know, but every day I was asking questions. I was learning. Oh, this is, a, okay, this, this, this. After a month, I knew everything. But because I was new and I didn't study and there were Vega kids under the internship I was in, they knew everything. I, I came in at 6 a.m. I left at 9 or whatever time, 9 p.m. Because I went in on YouTube. After everyone's gone in the office, I'm on YouTube. I'm taking uh, my, my ex uh, senior art director, Marcus. I used to ask him to give me his layouts and I'd rearrange them. I have to learn this stuff. After a month, I knew everything. And then the next part, how to conceptualize an ad, how, what makes a good ad, you know, all those things. I, I made through, I went, I, I, I was able to, to push through and win a few awards, won uh, best employee. And then a the nightmare came, you know. <laughs> um, while I was doing all of that, HR was hounding me. Hey, Patwani, hey, innocent, please send us your metric certificate. Please send us your, your what do they call it? Your certificate, whatever. And I lied. I said, I have this stuff. I didn't, you know. And the D-Day came. HR called me. They said, hey, dude, come upstairs. I went up. They said, cool. The internship was sponsored and they only want to sponsor matriculants. You lied to us. You don't have metric. You haven't given us the certificate. Um, yeah, we. you have to go. This is your last day. And you owe us all the money we paid you throughout the year. They were paying me X amount. Oh, and my gosh. I was scared, you know. I was like, oh. Okay, I'm, firstly, I'm losing my job. Secondly, I owe these people money. I don't know where am I going to find this money. And I went downstairs uh, to the studio. I called my boss. I said, hey, dude, we need to chat. Uh, it's my last day. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity. But I lied to you. I don't have metric. And uh, I have to go. They, they're letting me go. I said, okay, cool. Come with me. Let's go up. And I followed him. And he got to HR, he said, okay, guys, tell me what's happening. And they told him, okay, this guy lied to us. He doesn't have the paperwork, what, what, what. And he says, okay, but are you aware that this is the one of the best creatives we have in the studio right now? This guy's one best employee. He's won us awards. He's doing well. He's the best here. And I'm working late. He works late and all that stuff. And he said, please give him a permanent contract and scale up his salary to this and whatever that we owe to Mepsita, I'll, I'll pay for that because oh, wow. this guy needs to be here. We can't lose him. And oof, I cried oh. behind my boss's back like this and I couldn't believe it. You know, I told my mom, I've, I've got the job. I'm employed. I'm permanent. And I was like, wow, okay, this is ridiculous. You know, I, I was so excited. And the only thing that guaranteed or got me that job was the willingness to learn. Yeah. Because being talented is not enough. Knowing how to draw people's faces and all this stuff is not enough. That wasn't going to save me there. I had to learn how to can, how to do layouts. I had to learn things I never knew. And I, 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 I was adaptable, you yeah. know. And yeah, luckily I'm here. What I really uh, enjoy about our conversations and every time I, I, I engage with you is this very authentic, raw love for life and beautiful things yeah. that makes me feel like it's also okay to love beautiful things because, you know, they, they often do have a connotation of um, people assuming a lot of times that when you you love maybe luxurious items. It's because you you want to show them off. But for you, it's such a it's such a different and pure experience. And I and I think that's one of the things I take every time we we connect. And I think maybe I get there because I also know the other side. Yeah. You know the assets that you've been able to gather, the, the yes. apartments that you you own, the restaurant, uh, the agency, and and how you've kind of created some portfolio that offers you that uh, comfort and. Um, Security, I guess, to to some degree. 
for a boy who grew up in Soweto, where do you even start to interface with the conversation around assets and, and, and finances and portfolios? When was the first time you even heard the word assets and really understood what it meant? You know, um, when you start a job, there'll be financial advisors who will come and you're earning like nothing and they want you to invest. And it, it's always been off-putting for me, you know, because yeah. I'm like, dude, I don't afford this thing. Come I think on. for a lot of people. Yeah, you know, and I've, I, I don't like that. You let the young ones do their thing until they reach a certain bracket and then you can start talking investment. Uh, so I've always had it, but to me, I never resonated until one of my best friends, Zuripe, I was like, Donna, I was checking out properties. Um, let's buy that little place, rent it out to a student. And then the goal is 10 years later, we pay it off or it's paid off. Uh, and when we get more money, we start buying more of them. And we rent them out in, let's say we 10, 50, we have 10 of them or 20 of them. We can sell them and then go, cool. This is another a retirement fee, or it could be money that we can take our kids to school with or gift some of our kids those apartments to stay in while they're in college, things like that. And when you said that, then it resonated. This is a person I hang out with all the time, and he is speaking financial language in a way that I understand. And I was like, okay, cool, let's do it. How much would it be? At the time, the place was very cheap. Me and him went half and half on deposit, which was like 9,000 rand for the first one. And then there it is. First one, tenant, we have never had a stress with it. And then we went second, uh, then I won't tell you how many more. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and that was it, you know. And when I look back, I was like, wow, that, that was smart. But I wasn't thinking that I'm doing it. It's a smart move. And the restaurant stuff also, it wasn't honestly going oh, this is how me and my business partners going, let's expand on this and whatever. We were just going, we, we love food and we'd love to own a restaurant one day. And honestly, it was all for the wrong reasons to me. It's going, yeah, you know, I've got a restaurant and, you know, and <laughs> rude awakening. It's tough to run, oh my, run a restaurant. It is. It's extremely tough. And I don't suggest it to, to anyone. And... Um, we have it and we, we're running it. Uh, challenges are there, but I mean, we, we strive through. And to me, it's always now that I'm older, it's important to go, how do I channel what I make into a place where it will come back later? Or like, not just invest it in a bank account and it's sitting there. How do I... How do you generate I, return on your investments? Exactly. Mm. You know, and... My, my, one of my friend's dad said to me, you guys are in advertising. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, what do you do? We're like, we come up with ads for brands and stuff. And he said to me, then why don't you come up with ideas to make more money for yourselves? Why don't you brainstorm how to multiply your money? <laughs> and so to, to me, I, I always think of him and I go, okay, I have 10 rand. How can I multiply it? How, where can I put it where it can bring back more because I love nice things, you know. Mm. While I love nice things, I must justify uh, why I'm buying this expensive sneaker or expensive shirt. What, where is the other money coming from? Multiple income stream. And it's, 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 it's how I live and I try to invest in a, in a healthy way and in a way that it's not also... Too hectic because I want to enjoy life because I want to be traveling and doing all these things at the same time doing the right thing. Yeah. Life has to have a balance. Yeah. And this is how I live. I can't look fly in the streets and then I live in a dirty place. I, I want to know, I mean, I'm always curious about this, the idea of wealth and being rich. What does wealthy mean for you? How do you define wealth? And, and what does this picture look like where... You wake up and you say, I think I'm wealthy. You know, funny enough, wealth has nothing to do with money for me. It has nothing to do with money. And uh, growing up in humble beginnings, I used to listen to a lot of music. And there's a guy who said a quote like, Visual, visualize wealth and put yourself in the picture. And I visualized wealth for me at the time. There was no money involved there. There was just like pure happiness. And this was me growing 
doing backflips and gymnastics in a beautiful garden, uh, uh, riding my bike and motorbikes, swimming in a beautiful ocean, having a pool in my house, right? And that's what, that's like just having fun. That was my idea of what wealth is. Yes, those things do require money. But to me, wealth is waking up and doing what I love with all my heart and not having to stress. You know, yes, there is life stresses. But um, imagine I wake up and I go, okay, cool. I'm going to have muesli. I have muesli. I call my brother and say, cool, dude, let's go for a walk. And we go for a walk. And then we go shop for plants or shop for shirts or shorts. And then we go, cool, let's go to the studio. We have to meet our client there and let's do this. That's wealth for me. It's, it has, honestly has nothing to do with money. It's, it's curating your life in a way that it makes you happy. It edifies to you. It's not, yes, I love money. It comes into my account and I go, it affords me that, okay, I'm going to fly to France and all of that stuff. But everything that I do, uh, goes back to adding to my life, you know, right? So I wake up and I do everything that I love and it pays me. That's wealth for me. That's when waking up and doing what you love and that paying you, Yeah. you know? And obviously in that dream world or in that beautiful life, you need to be present because I need to chase payments. There's, there's collectors who've taken work that have been paid because when that money comes, it buys me time to go, oh, I want to go to Portugal. I want to go get inspiration. I want to go to Lamu in Kenya. All of that, you need to be present. But it's flow. Wealth is flow. You need to touch points. The money part is the last part, but it's important. Everything that makes you happy is what wealth is. Being able to sit with my brother and have dinner at a place we love, taking my mom to like a holiday in, she says, where? She wanna go to Bali with my sister. That's wealth for me. Going, okay, you choose, decide, whatever, yeah, you know. Yeah. At the same time, yes, I work, I stress about uh, my cash flow, making sure it's balanced. You know, I'm not a perfect guy. Mm. And um, it's just being able to wake up and do what I love every day. I get it. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Yeah. Because... You've spoken about so many people who have been there for you through your journey. You know, um, the, the, the director at uh, FCB, your brother, your mother, I think even your father in a way has really impacted your, your success journey. And I know there's many other people that we didn't get a chance to mention. You mentioned mentors, partners. Yes. If you had an opportunity to put all those people in a room and just tell them how they've impacted you what would you what would you say to them i'd say thank you for seeing my potential and also thank you for constantly reminding me of who i am and believing in me because to get to the confidence level i'm in all these people played a huge role and the con- confidence is easily confused as arrogance. But me, confidence, my, I'm confident at what I do. And it helps uh, build the kind of following I have and the people who buy my work is based on my confidence as well. And this was uh, nurtured and uh, uh, brought by my mentors, my, all these people you're saying. So I'd say to them, thank you for constantly keeping me on check and believing in me and reminding me that I'm not just a cat, I'm a lion. Because ah, I, I forget that. sometimes, you know. I love that. that. I'm a champ as well, you know. Fatuani, thank you so much for sharing so openly. I um, am inspired by a, a lot of your awareness, your authenticity, your your presence in the moment now. I, I love the definition of your, your name and, and how you bring it to life in, in all the decisions that you make on a daily basis, your awareness, yes. your, your awakeness yes. and your wisdom. Thank, Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. This has been The Few, brought to you by Zappa Bank.